If you thought Neon Genesis Evangelion was complicated with its different types of Avas, that's nothing compared to the range of Avas present in Rebuild. Some Evangelions are made from Adam's flesh, some from Adam's cores, and some are Adam itself. As crazy as that may be, nothing is more special than the Ava that seemingly exists in an outversal area and has been brought to Nur. This Evangelion should not even exist as per their earlier events, but it does. It is unique enough to require two pilots for its operation. It is unique enough to take a person outside the doors of Guff. And most importantly, it's unique enough to create a different reality altogether. So why is it so special? Let's go over it in this video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Who created Ava 13 and why? Evangelion 13 was a special Evangelion unit created by Zila in the rebuild of Evangelion continuity. It was introduced for the first time in the third film, Evangelion 3.0, You Cannot Redo. It is a unit far different compared to anything we've seen in the original Neon Genesis as well as rebuild, as it has been created for being simultaneously piloted by two people. For this purpose, Shinji Ikari and the angel Kaworo Nagisa have been picked. Both pilots have previously operated other Evangelions in Rebuild, with Shinji piloting his signature Ava 1, while Kawaru piloted Mark 6, which had been created to attain true godhood. However, the battle against Zeruel led to Shinji almost causing the third impact, and was eventually sealed and made to float across Earth's lower orbit while Mark 6 was made to merge with Lilith in Central Dogma, but both the Evangelion and the Second Angel were impaled with the Spear of Longinus. The return of the characters following the 14-year time skip after the second Rebuild film led to them co-piloting the same Evangelion for Nerve. Needless to say, Evangelion 13 has been created by Nerve itself, unlike the Mark series that were developed under Zila. With Shinji being assigned as one of the two pilots of the Eva, it only makes sense for the commander of Nerve, Gendo Ikari, to oversee the creation of the Evangelion. We see the Eva for the first time inside a gigantic dome-like incubation facility. The place is located deep inside what remains of Nerve following the third impact and departure of most of the staff, such as Misato, Ritsuko, and Asuka Tovila. Gendo and Professor Fuyutsuki refer to the Evangelion 13 as the final executor, while it is brought out of the incubator to be deployed for the first time. The Eva was created to be used on Minus Space, a place known as the Realm of the Gods where normal laws of physics don't apply. Usage of the Evangelion 13 would theoretically lead to Gendo being able to resurrect Yui. This area is also known as the Anti-Universe. It is a place located beyond the doors of Guff, and during the events of the Second Impact, Misato Katsuragi's father believed an imaginary Evangelion existed there. This led to them opening the Chamber of Guff. The Minus Space is Lovecraftian in nature, in the sense that it cannot be perceived by humans, or at least by human senses. While the average human cannot travel there, it is possible for such a feat to be achieved by the atoms who were awakened during Rebuild's second impact, or by beings who possess atom-like powers, such as the different types of Evangelions, or humans who have united with Evangelions. The Ava 13 fits into this as it can be used to cross the doors of Guff and reach the Minus Space. Base. This brings us to Gendo's emotional control over Shinji, who has been retrieved from the Earth's lower orbit by the Masato Katsuragi-headed anti-nerve organization known as Vila after a 14-year time skip. Gendo sends the Mark IX, piloted by the new Rei Aonami clone, to Vila's headquarters, the AAA Wonder, to retrieve Shinji. The mission is successful, despite Vila's Evas, piloted by Asuka and Mari, trying to stop Rei and Shinji, which is brought to Nerve. There, Shinji learns that he has to co-pilot Evangelion 13 with Kawaru. Shinji and Kawaru start a friendship, and Kawaru shows him the devastation caused by the near third impact to Shinji, who is distraught after seeing how Tokyo 3, the world, and the population of humanity is in shame shambles because of him. Obviously, Shinji only wanted to save Rei, but things get worse when he finds out from Fuyutsuki how that failed, since the new Rei was a new clone, created from the remains of his late mother, whose soul exists within the control system of Unit 1. Shinji suffers from a nervous breakdown as a result of his failure, but he finds solace in Kawaru, who encourages him with Gendo's plan, a false plan where they have to co-pilot Evangelion 13 and remove the spears of Longinus and Cassius from the corpse of Lilith and Mark VI, who were kept in the deepest part of central dogma, the terminal dogma. Once they reach there, however, Kawaru ends up realizing the plan was a farce, and that both Lilith and the Mark were impaled by the spears of Longinus. There was no spear of Cassius in sight. He tries to stop Shinji from pulling the spears out because it is meant to continue the third impact, but the protagonist refuses to hear him out and does it anyway. Following this, he absorbs the twelfth angel that had been living within Mark VI, thus causing
causing its awakening. This starts the fourth impact by opening the doors of Guff, just like Gendo had intended. The black moon from the geofront is pulled up to the surface of the sky while Kawaru tries to abort the impact. He uses the spears to impale Evangelion 13, but doing so causes the DSS choker remote detonator around his neck to explode, killing the angel. While Evangelion 13 is incapacitated, it remains awakened until Mari and Shinji force the entry plug to eject to shut off the Evangelion. In the end of the film, however, Gendo and Fuyutsuki discuss how everything has gone according to plan since Kawaru was finally dead and Evangelion 13 had just awakened. Evangelion 13 is not just made of Adam, but it was previously an Adam itself, which we'll dive into in a later section. Either way, Gendo needed Shinji to pilot it so that he could continue the third impact Shinji had started at the end of Evangelion 2.0 and eventually lead to Gendo's version of human instrumentality. How he plans to do it is by fusing with the Eva and becoming its primary soul and controller. With this, Gendo plans to take the Evangelion 13 and go inside Minus Space, which is now made a possibility for him as a human due to the Evangelion being able to do so. Why does Ava 13 have a dual pilot system? What is the reason for its four arms? Evangelion 13 is the only Ava we've ever seen that has two entry plugs for an operational dual pilot system. The Evangelion cannot be piloted without two souls inhabiting it at the same time. A singular person can use it if the control system changes the machinations to transfer control to a single pilot, but of course, Shinji and Kawaru are never told about this. When Kawaru and Shinji reach Terminal Dogma, they realize that they have have to pull out the Spear of Longinus from the overgrown Lilith and the Spear of Cassius from Mark VI at the same time to reverse the effects of the near third impact. This is why Evangelion 13 possesses four arms, with each pair being used to remove one spear. As we've already mentioned, Mark VI was also impaled with the Spear of Longinus, and Kawaru went against Gendo's orders after he realized his true intentions. Meanwhile, Shinji used the arms to remove the spears, which caused the destruction of the Lilith body and freed the angel-possessed Mark VI. Evangelion 13's unique build also gives it staggering strength, making it powerful enough to thrash Asuka and Unit 2 around once Vila attacks the Ava to stop the impact. What's crazier is that Ava 13 does it with ease while fighting defensively against an offensive Asuka. And while it is similar to the Lilith-born Unit 1 in appearance, it has Adam's fruit of life and naturally the power of the super solenoid engine. This allows Ava 13 to operate without a battery or an energy cable that keeps it attached to an energy source. But the most unusual usual thing about it would be the lack of an AT field. When Mari's Unit H shot at it using anti-AT field ammunition, it had no effect on the Evangelion, causing the bullets to disintegrate upon contact. The Ava deployed four drones from its shoulder pylons, with each side having two containers. It created an energy barrier that was similar to an AT field, and Ava could fight using two spears due to having four arms. It is also made of Atom, which in rebuild means it's an energy being. This allowed the awakened Evangelion 13 to project powerful fire fire beams of light. How does Ava 13 compensate for having no AT field? Ava 13 swaps out its AT field with the RS Hoppers, which refers to the four aforementioned drones that the Evangelion deployed against Mari and Unit 8. It was also used during a fight against Ava 2. The Hoppers are stored within containers that are fixed on the shoulder pylons of the Ava. When an opponent uses an AT field against the Ava, the drones are deployed from the pylons, with each of them creating their own AT fields that can be used for offense as well as defense. They are automatic in function and react to the emotional state of the pilot. The Hoppers are made of an unidentified material with detached light blue tendrils that trail behind making them look like jellyfish. While deploying the AT field, the form of the RS hoppers becomes more mechanical. Despite their small size, however, the drones explode violently when Asuka takes them down. Although the RS hoppers are good enough at compensating for the lack of an AT field, they are a temporary solution, which gives having a natural AT field the edge over the RS hoppers. Is Ava 13 created from Adam's flesh or Adam himself? Rebuild of Evangelion alters the events in and around the second impact. In the original series, Adam and the Spear of Longinus were found in Antarctica, which led to Zila reducing the first angel to an embryo using human DNA. This would allow them to handle Adam much more easily and cause the third impact in human instrumentality 15 years later. In Rebuild, there were at least four Adams initially and they were launched across the world, with one of them even landing on the moon with its Spear of Cassius. The Adam bodies were later used by Zila to make Evangelion Mark series, with some Avas such as Mark IX being made of Adam's core 
as an Adam's vessel, while others, such as Mark VI, were made of Adam's body. Evangelion 13 proves to be an Adam as well when the fourth impact begins and it turns into a giant energy being. Its four arms, two lances, and two halos, however, make it different from any other Adam Evangelion. It was also implied by the third rebuild film that there were not four, but five Adams, which we have spoken about with reference to the existence of a theoretical Adam outside the Chamber of God. It can be stated that it was the fifth Adam that became the Evangelion 13. During its evolution from the Ava form to the Adam form, Ritzko called it an Adam survivor, stating that Evangelion 13 was not evolving to adopt a new form, but returning to its original form. What is interesting here is that the basis of evolution in Neon Genesis has always revolved around a return. For example, Zila desires to take down the AT fields of humanity using third impact and cause the instrumentality. In this stage, humans would return to LCL, that is, Lilith's blood. But this is literally how humans were born. Humans existing with AT fields and individual personalities is their evolution. And yet, Zila implied that their version of instrumentality would usher humanity into evolution, when it would only return them to their original forms. As you can see, a similar logic is introduced with the concept of Adam's survivor. The issue is, there are several discrepancies throughout the lore of Rebuild, some of them stating that Evangelion 13 is one of the four Adams, and others implying that it is the fifth Adam. For example, the Dead Sea Scrolls Apocrypha in the final Rebuild film, Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, Thrice Upon a Time, shows four winged energy beings, referring to the four Adams, after which they show a fifth being with four arms, which quite obviously refers to the four-armed Evangelion 13. It was seemingly captured by humanity after the doors of Guff were opened in the second impact, after which it was modified by Nerve and turned into an Evangelion since Gendo wanted to use it and go to minus space. However, Evangelion 13 is not an Adam's vessel, but it is probably similar to Mark VI, which was made with Adam's body. Another similar Evangelion would be the Ava 1, which started the near third impact in the second film. Meanwhile, Mark VI, created to attain true godhood, seemingly started the third impact, which led to it being impaled with the Spear of Longinus while it was attached to Lilith in Terminal Dogma. This is also why Kawaru referred to Terminal Dogma as Ground Zero of Third Impact. And finally, Evangelion 13 started the fourth impact, or the continuation of the third impact, after Shinji essentially got played by Gendo as usual. All three units are implied to be modified atoms. They have started their own impacts, and they are similar in design as well. This means that Evangelion 13 is not an Adam's vessel, or made from Adam's flesh like the original Evangelions from Neon Genesis, and is instead Adam himself. This is why it could experience pseudo-evolution like Unit 1 as it turned into an energy being with halos. How powerful is Ava 13 in its awakened state? What is the only way to stop it? As one of the Adam Giants from the Second Impact, it is obvious that Evangelion 13 is extremely powerful. It is also referred to as the Final Executor by Fuyutsuki, which solidifies its importance. The altercation between Ava 13 and Ava 2, which takes place after the Vila pilots reach Terminal Dogma in an attempt to stop another impact, leads to 13 deploying its RS hoppers, since it can't create its own AT field. However, the deployment of four hoppers creates four AT fields, which gives Ava 13 a huge advantage since the average Evangelion can create only a single AT field. Asuka manages to destroy all four hoppers after great effort, but eventually her Evangelions get low on power, turning the tide of the battle to Shinji's favor. It is awakened after it consumes the 12th angel from within the Mark VI as the angel compresses into a core within Ava 13, which absorbs its power and returns to its original state as an energy being. This causes the Black Moon to get pulled out of the ground to the skies, opening the door of Guff just as Gendo had planned for the fourth impact. Needless to say, the reopening of the door begins to cause large-scale destruction. This is followed by Misato and Ritsuko attacking the reawakened Ava in the AAA Wonder Battleship, which doubles as the headquarters for the anti-nerve organization known as Vila. With the third Ray clone attacking with the Mark IX, a vessel of Adam made of the First Angel's core, Asuka in Ava II and Mari in Ava VIII are dispatched. Mari goes after Ava 13. After Asuka defeats Mark 9 by causing her Evangelion to detonate after ejecting herself out of it, the AAA Wonder resumes its original plan to go after Ava 13 after its engine recovers. However, Ava 13 at this point is too powerful to be taken down by an opponent. The best way to neutralize it is via an inside job, which is where Kawaru comes into play 
who was co-piloting it with Shinji. He uses the two spears of launchness that were being held by the Eva to stab itself, and he dies soon after when his DSS choker is made to detonate due to his betrayal. Soon after, Mari in Eva 8 attacks 13 and catches it. However, the glowing engine from 13 causes the hands of Eva 8 to corrode into core. She cannot take it down with brute strength, so she causes Shinji's entry plug to eject, leaving Evangelion 13 devoid of both of its pilots with Shinji out and Kaworu dead. This leads to the Eva returning to its non-evolved form, and it crashes to the ground while the door of Guff starts to close. Just because an Eva has evolved or returned to its divine state does not make it invincible, as we can tell from this battle. The power of the evolved Eva, at least in this case, lies in its ability to start an impact and the fact that it can exist beyond the doors of Guff. In terms of combat, a lot boils down to the competence and mental state of a pilot. This is how Ava 13 became the key to changing reality itself. Ava 13, Instrumentality and Impacts. By the end of the third film, we witness three impacts take place in the course of the story. Not in the past, but in the present. The near third impact caused by Shinji trying to save Rei from Zeruel. The third impact caused during the time skip with Mark VI and Lilith being attached to one another. And the fourth impact caused by Evangelion 13. Shinji was at the core of each of the three impacts, including the one caused by Mark Six and Lilith merging since it was triggered by the near third impact, which led to Kaworu coming down from the moon in Mark Six to incapacitate the pseudo-evolved Unit One. This is why all of humanity blamed Shinji. The final movie, You Can Not Redo, witnesses the launch of the human instrumentality after Nerve HQ reawakens an incapacitated Evangelion 13 by transferring it, the Black Moon, and the Atoms to the site of the second impact. The fourth impact is made to resume after the NHG series turns the the Black Moon into spears, which are then impaled into the epicenter of the second impact as it reopens the doors of Guff. Remember the term Adam Survivor? It implied that one of the Atoms had not survived, which led to the creation of the key of Nebuchadnezzar, which is a compact form of Adam, much like the Adam embryo from the original series. After Ritsuko and Misato confront Gendo, he reveals that he has used the key and thrown away his humanity by adding information to his brain that surpasses the world's logic. With this ability, Gendo retrieves Unit 1 which has been powering the AAA Wonder and enters Ava 13 through its mouth. To right his wrongs, Shinji decided to pilot Ava Unit 1 to take down his father while Mari merges with Ava 9, 10, 11, and 12, gaining the ability to navigate itself beyond the doors of Guff. Within Unit 1, Shinji once again shows off an infinite sync ratio and regenerates his limbs before using them to strangle Evangelion 13. Gendo goes on to show an imaginary Evangelion that turns into a Black Lilith. In fact, the second impact and rebuild was held by the Katsuragi expedition so that Misato's father could prove the existence of this imaginary Evangelion. Gendo and Shinji begin their fight in an alternate universe, clashing at several locations across time and space that now exist physically due to Shinji's memories. However, the rest of the world is then revealed to be a tokusatsu film, which refers to Japanese films that rely on special effects such as superhero moves. The other Evangelions and battleships are all props. The Eva costume suits for actors. The Akaris travel to other locations as Shinji tries to reason with Gendo, but Gendo seems to be scared of Shinji as he subconsciously pulls up his AT field. However, Shinji breaks through it. In this new reality, where everyone is part of a film and nothing is as real as it was, Gendo reveals his lonely past to Shinji, a past where he grew up without parents and found solace in his piano and books. He meets Professor Fuyutsuki and Yui via an older Mari and ends up falling in love with Yui. This leads to Shinji learning how traumatized Gendo was after losing his lover. The setting soon shifts to the Kumoha 42 railcar, where Misato tries to end the impact caused by Gendo in the final movie, also known as the additional impact, by sacrificing herself. She manifests the Spear of Gaius as she represents the will of humanity, and it materializes in the hands of Shinji, making her sacrifice worth the trouble. Asuka is also revealed to be the last surviving clone from the Shikinami series. Shinji talks to her as well as Kawaru to get closure, which leads to him confessing having had feelings for Asuka. However, Asuka's physical age had not changed during the 14-year time skip due to the curse of Eva up until now. The new reality within the additional impact also allowed the late Kawaru to have a dialogue 
dialogue with the late Kaji, the latter having died in an attempt to stop the third impact caused by Mark VI and Lilith. Ultimately, Shinji decides to cause a complete reset, or a neon genesis of the world. This will be a world without Evangelions, and it's made possible by Masato sacrificing herself to create the Spear of Gaius. Shinji tries to stab himself with the spear while in Unit 1, when the soul of Yui Akari, which was within the unit, pushes him out to protect him. Shinji realizes that his mother had been with him all along, and in this continuity, Gendo actually gets the opportunity to redeem himself, unlike in the end of Evangelion, where he was killed by Unit 1 for abandoning Shinji. Gendo embraces Shinji and Unit 1, with Yui in it from behind. Ultimately, Unit 1 and Ava 13 sacrifice themselves, which leads to every Evangelion getting speared, probably due to their love representing the will of humanity. Everything is returned to its human and animal forms, the way Lilith had created the population of the world, and the planet resets to its original state that it was in prior to the impacts. Ultimately, the Neon Genesis, or the New Genesis, causes the destruction of the Evangelion imaginary. It is due to its incomprehensible and quite literally imaginary nature that the human instrumentality caused by the additional impact allowed the characters to move through space, time, and different realities. Towards the end, Asuka, Kawaru, and Rei stand on a train station platform. Shinji is older now, and Mari approaches him. She takes off the DSS choker from his neck, and they walk out of the station together as they reach a live-action sequence which represents the hometown of writer Hideaki Anno. With them arriving in the real world, it represents the children having found some closure in our reality. MARVELOUS VERDICT! Evangelion 13 is the strongest Ava because it is implied to be the final boss of all Avas as per the words of Professor Fuyutsuki, the plans of Gendo, and the teachings of the Dead Sea Scrolls Apocrypha. As an Evangelion born from the Evangelion imaginary, or so we assume, 13 successfully created a whole new reality and reversed the repercussions of all the impacts by ceasing to exist, removing Evangelions as a whole in the process. In a way, this makes Evangelion 13 the primary Eva and the most important one for Gendo and Nur. With that, today's video comes to an end. What are your thoughts on Evangelion 13? What are your opinions on its true nature and abilities? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments section below, and until next time, thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.